Greetings in the precious name of Jesus Christ. This is a wonderful day. This is a blessed day. And I'm honored to share in this devotion with you, focusing on the topic, deceptions to avoid. Our anchor text has been Revelation chapter 12 and verse number 9. Bible says, So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Notice the devil uses deception. He's been deceiving since the Garden of Eden. All through biblical history, the devil has been deceiving. And even in our day and time, one of the most critical tools that the enemy uses against our lives and against the efforts we seek to do is deception. And I want us to notice the number of deceptions we have covered so far in this study. We understood number one, it is a deception when we fail to practice or to apply the word that we hear. We discovered it is a deception when we lack humility in our self-assessment. We discovered it is a deception when we reject the truth that is meant to correct us. We understood it is a deception when we use worldly wisdom as our standard for life. Number five, we understood that as long as we become rich, we don't need anything else is a very serious deception. We also understood it is a deception when we lack control on our own words. And today I want to share two more deceptions that I believe also the enemy uses them to ensure that our lives are removed off the right track, to ensure that the destiny we aim to attain to, the enemy makes sure that he has diverted that. This is a deception that you and I must pay careful attention to because it is a very powerful one and it is one that has got its own kind of a ripple effect. And this is it. Thinking my choices don't have consequences. Thinking my choices don't have consequences. Turn with me to the book of Galatians chapter number 6. Galatians chapter number 6. And I want us to look at verse number 7 and verse number 8. The Bible says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Look at verse number 7. It begins by saying, do not be deceived. That means it is possible for one to walk under this kind of deception. And we are warned that God cannot be mocked. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. There are many people that think their choices don't have consequences. So they would go ahead and decide on anything. They would go ahead and decide to live nasty lives. They would go ahead and decide to repay anyone for anything they have ever done. They would make decisions not even caring about the future or what could even boomerang back to them. That's a dangerous place to be. You cannot live your life with the deception that you don't think your choices have consequences. Time and time again, there are stories, not just in scripture, but also in history, also in our community, also in our nation of individuals that took actions and their consequences have caught up with them. Others who took actions and sad to say the consequences not only touched them but also went ahead and touched the second and even probably the third of their generations. Because the truth is simply this, whatsoever a person sows, that is exactly what they are going to reap. The wise man spoke about this in Proverbs chapter number 17 and I want you to look at verse number 
13. Proverbs 17 and verse number 13. This is a very important one that I don't want you to miss. The Bible says, whoever rewards evil for good, evil will not depart from his house. Whoever rewards evil for good, then guess what? Evil will not depart from his house. What does this mean? This simply means you've got to be careful. If people have been good to you, if people have been kind to you, if people have been courteous to you, don't repay that good with evil. Your employer has been good to you, don't repay it with evil. Your parents have been gracious to you, don't repay it with evil. Your pastors have been kind to you, don't repay it with evil. Because if you repay it with evil, then the principle still applies. Whatever you sow is what you're going to reap. The scripture tells us evil will not depart from your house. And there are so many people going through life and they're wondering why things are not turning out correctly. Let me tell you, before you look for a demon to blame or before you look for a curse to blame, could it be possible that you're actually dealing with harvests of seeds you sowed years back that now the harvest is catching up with you? You know, friend, I want you to know this. If you don't like the harvests you're seeing today, two things you can do. One, you can plant good seeds. And number two, you can ask God to stop all the harvests of negative seeds that you sowed so that these things don't continue playing out in your future. Those are two things you can do because the principle is clear. Don't you ever think that your choices don't have consequences. They have got massive consequences. And that's why we need the wisdom and the help of God that we don't fall into this trap of the enemy. We don't deceive ourselves by thinking that our choices don't have consequences. Here's another deception that I want us to pay attention to. Believing that sin has no effect on my relationship with God. Believing that sin has no effect on my relationship with God. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 6. 1 Corinthians chapter number 6, and I'm looking at verse number 9 and verse number 10. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9 and 10, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. There are people who sit and they think that you can entertain sin in your life and it will never affect your relationship with God. The Bible tells us in verse number 9, do not be deceived. Don't walk in the deception that you can continue in fornication and it will never affect your relationship with God. Don't walk in the deception that you can have an idol and it doesn't affect your relationship with God. Don't walk in the deception that adultery, homosexuality, sodomy can never affect your relationship with God. It's a deception and the enemy will throw this kind of deception even within the body of Christ. Don't you think that stealing cannot affect your relationship with God? It does. It affects your relationship with God. Some people think, I can just be a social drinker, and that's fine. The Bible says, drunkards, covetous, revelers, extortioners will not inherit the kingdom of God. You've got to know this, and you should not fall into this deception that sin has no effect on your relationship with God. It has an effect. That's why God had to send His only begotten Son because sin had already affected man and separated him from a holy God. Child of God, be careful that these deceptions don't catch up with you. Don't you ever live your life thinking your choices don't have consequences. Don't you ever go through life believing that sin has no effect on your relationship with God. 
No, it has a big effect. And that's why we need to pray and to ask God to help us that as we make choices, we shall make choices with His wisdom. We shall make choices that are guided of Him. We need to trust Him to give us grace that if there be any sin in our lives, He will help us. He will remove it from us. He will wash us clean from the guilt that comes with sin so that our relationship with God is not affected. Our eternity with Him is not affected. Our, our eternity with Him is not affected, neither is it corrupted or destroyed, but we shall be able to live lives that please Him. We are looking at deceptions to avoid and the deceptions that the enemy uses to cage God's people. The deceptions the enemy uses to make sure that the lives of God's people have been frustrated. The lives of God's people are not on track. And that's why we are going through these scriptures. And I know some of these words may be heavy. Some of them may be tough. But guess what? God is able to give us grace and God is able to help us. I want us to pray together and trust God for his wisdom in the choices that we've got to make and trust him to remove the problem of sin in our lives. And know this, there's only one solution, one cure to sin and that is the blood of Jesus. For what can wash away my sin? It is nothing but the blood of Jesus. Come, let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word, for your word is a mirror. We look at it and we see the areas in our lives that we need your help. Father, I pray today we shall not fall into the deception of living life and believing that our choices don't have consequences. I pray, Father, today, if there be any brother or any sister that is going through a situation in their life whereby they are harvesting from wrong seeds they planted in life, I pray today by your grace and by your mercy, uproot every wrong seed they planted and let the harvest stop in their lives in the name of Jesus. I ask the Lord you shall equally give us wisdom that our choices will be marked by your wisdom. We trust you. We trust you for wisdom. We trust you for grace to make choices that are sober, choices that are guided of you and choices that glorify you. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that is able to wash us of every sin and every iniquity. And we plead that blood over our lives today. We plead that blood over us today that, Lord, we shall not walk in the deception that sin has no effect on our relationship with you. We pray, O oh God, that the enemy will not plant it in our minds and in our hearts, that we can have a little sin and it does nothing in our relationship with you. No, Lord, we refuse that deception. And we pray right now your blood to wash us clean, wash us white as snow in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that the same blood that also deals with our conscience will remove the guilt of sin and the shame of sin and cause us to be bold whenever we come to you. Bold to access the throne of grace where we may find grace and obtain mercy to help us even in the time of need. We thank you for the work of the cross and we thank you for the blood. We commit this day into your hands. We commit our families into your hands. We commit our dreams into your hands. We commit our visions into your hands. We commit our businesses into your hands. We commit everything that is dear to us into your hands. And we trust you today to see us through. We trust you to walk with us. We trust you to help us. And we trust you to see us victorious at the end of this day. May your name be glorified. May your name be magnified. We give you thanks. We give you praise for we ask this in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. I know the Lord is helping us and I know His Holy Spirit is working in us. And this is the good news. We will not fall into the traps of deceptions of the enemy. God is making us strong. God is making us able. God is making us victorious through the revelation of his word and the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. I want you to have a blessed day today and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow as we keep on studying deceptions to avoid. Have a blessed day.
Amen and Amen.